All right, the last two parts of section 12.1 are going to deal with special types of sequences. Probably the most important ones and the ones you're going to see most commonly. This video deals with arithmetic sequences. An arithmetic sequence, what is it? It's a pattern of numbers that changes consistently. Meaning, you have the same number is added or subtracted over and over. Very simple patterns. Those are called arithmetic. This word right here, arithmetic, that's a word you're going to see maybe on your college entrance exam. Remember, arithmetic means added or subtracted repeatedly. An arithmetic sequence is a linear function. And we've talked about linear, y equals mx plus b. Arithmetic sequences are linear functions. Some examples of arithmetic sequences. 4, 7, 10, 13. Why is that arithmetic? Because the common difference is 3. 50, 48, 46, 44 is also arithmetic because the common difference is negative 2. The numbers change consistently. Now here's an example of a sequence that's not arithmetic. 1, 3, 6, 10, 15. There's a pattern there. But it's not arithmetic because you add 2, and then you add 3, and then you add 4, and then you add 5. That is not arithmetic. Now, let's talk about our two types of formulas. Please write these down. First of all, a recursive formula that is arithmetic. Two types of formulas we need to write for arithmetic sequences. The two types of formulas, a recursive formula that's arithmetic, remember that always uses the prior term to get the new term. The new term, a sub n, is equal to the prior term plus d. Now what is d? d is the common difference. I'm going back a slide. That's like these numbers right here. Plus 3 would be the common difference. Minus 2 would be the common difference. Whatever you add or subtract goes in that spot, and you're done. That's the recursive formula for any arithmetic sequence. Now, how about the explicit formula? Well, this is going to be like y equals mx plus b. The formula is the nth term is equal to the slope, which is also could be called the common difference, whatever that is, times n, which is our position, plus our starting point or our y-intercept, which is actually a sub 0, which is the 0 term in our sequence. It's actually pretty simple. Let's do an example. 37, 42, 47, 52, dot, dot, dot. I want to write both formulas. Well, what you first do is you find D, the common difference. Well, these numbers are going up by 5. Well, then very simply, the recursive formula it says right here is a sub n, the new term or the next term, is equal to the prior term, a sub n minus 1, and the common difference is plus 5. You're done. There's your recursive formula for this arithmetic sequence. Let's talk explicit formula. Explicit formula is this. It says the nth term in your pattern is equal to the slope. Our slope is that common difference, which is plus 5 times n 
for the position plus now it says the zero term in my pattern of numbers I'm gonna do a little erasing here in my pattern of numbers this is the first term that's the second term that's the third term that's the fourth term where's the zero term well that's at the beginning one spot earlier follow the pattern what number would go there well that number obviously is 32 that number is my zero term which goes at the end of the explicit formula now people this should work if I put the number 1 in for n, the first term in my pattern, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 32. Oh, wow, look at that. My first term is 37. Well, what if I put a 2 in for n? 5 times 2 is 10, plus the 32 makes 42. Wow, my second term is 42, etc. So it does work. And that's how you write your formulas for arithmetic sequences. Last, I'm going to talk about the arithmetic mean. As you notice in example 1 and example 2, I have some pattern in numbers, but my middle numbers are missing. The arithmetic mean helps us find those. Basically, what is it? You find the average of the given numbers to find the missing terms so that the sequence is arithmetic. Now, how do you do that? Well, very simply, very simply, what you do... What you do is if there is two missing numbers, or I mean one missing number, basically what you do is you add the two numbers at the ends together. If there's only one number missing in the middle, you add the two and divide by two. And that will give you your middle number. 34, 30 plus 4 is 34 divided by 2 is 17. 17 is my missing number. Now you notice... You add 13 to get there, and you add 13 to get there. So it's consistent. Now, however, if you're missing more than one number in the middle, like these right here, they're missing three of them. The procedure is this. You need to count how many terms there are from the beginning. So there's one term, two terms, three terms, four terms. That's what you're going to divide by. And now on the top... You take the end term that you know, 27, and you minus off 3, which is the beginning term. So 27 minus 3, 27 minus 3 is 24 divided by 4. That equals 6. People, that's our D value. That's our common difference. So basically I add 6. 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 plus 6 is 15. 15 plus 6 is 21, 21 plus 6 is 27. And that's how you find the missing terms in the middle. Now that would also work for this problem too if you wanted to do it that way. Because 30 minus 4 divided by 2 would be 13. And if you notice, that's our common difference. So, that's how you find arithmetic mean and how you find missing terms. And that summarizes what arithmetic sequences are.